History of transmission In the 19th century the electricity began to be used, the inventors installed generators next to the electric machines. The first distribution system, which was invented in 1882 by Thomas Edison, distributed power using direct current through copper cables. This type of distribution was inefficient where generators had to be located less than a mile away from the load. At that time, the power system was formed by a group of small power plants serving loads within a small radius. Most people now refer to all the early power systems as distributed generation systems, which means that the generators are located close to the electric machines. By the 1890s, the developments of distribution systems were introduced. The invention of AC transmission system pushed the industry to install larger generators to serve larger load demands. Using this ideology, the electric distribution system continued to grow exponentially. The electrical power output skyrocketed from 5.9 million kilowatt hours KW in 1907 to 75.4 million kilowatt hours in 1927. During that same period, the actual price of electricity declined by 55% although many people still viewed it as a luxury. The growth continued after World War II. By 1972, the number of such plants went to 122 power plants. In the period between 1948 and 1965, generating electricity would cost less to produce one kilowatt hour of electricity. Meanwhile, a growth in higher voltage transmission lines was also present, giving utility the chance to transmit power over more distance from power sources. The number of miles of high-voltage transmission lines tripled to more than 60,000 circuit miles in the 1960s compared to its non-existent in the 1950s. In addition, natural gas pipelines were built to transcontinental natural gas between consumers and gas-producing regions in the United States, providing the utilities with a cheap fuel alternate for new generation plants. At the beginning of the 21st century, the transmission system became a large grid utilizing more than 150,000 miles of AC high-voltage transmission lines. Limitations of transmission systems The specifications and characteristics of a power network advance with time by demand increase and added generation. With such changes, distribution and power delivery systems will face problems if the transmission lines are not upgraded and utilized to their full potential. The electricity demand has been rapidly changing, especially in the last decade due to technological advancement where, for example, electric cars got introduced to our electric grid as a load and as a source. However, these rapid changes in technological advancements are being hindered by the limitations we have on the transmission lines. The ability of the transmission system to transmit power becomes lessened by the following steady state and dynamic limitations. 1. Thermal limits. 2. Stability. 3. Dielectrics. 4. Impedance. Several types of fax controllers were designed and commissioned in different parts of the world. World. The most known ones are Load Tap Changers, Static VAR Compensators SVC, Thyristor Controlled Series Compensator TCSC, and Unified Power Flow Controllers UPFC. Power flow has always relied on generator control, voltage regulators using tap changers, phase shifting transformers, and reactive power plant compensation switching. Fax devices can control the power flow by controlling the main parameters of any transmission line. One line impedance. Two phase angle. Three voltage magnitude. In addition, fax devices can also be used to increase the stability of the network and regulate its voltage. In general, there are several advantages of using fax devices and they can be summarized as follow. 5. Better utilization of existing transmission system assets and reduce the need for construction of new transmission lines. 6. Increase systems reliability and availability by controlling reactive and real power flow independently. 7. Increase dynamic and transient grid. 8. Increase quality of supply for sensitive industries. 9. Environmental Benefits Power Electronics and Fax Controllers Fax incorporates power electronics and controllers to enhance power system controllability and increase transfer capability. Fax Controller Methodology Broadly, the flexible AC transmission system can be classified into two main categories, the voltage source converter type devices which are the most common used fax devices and the variable impedance devices. 
Each type has a different suitable type of controller based on the application it will be used for. Below is a detailed information on the different types of fax controllers. 10. Voltage Source Converter VSC VSC utilizes power electronics devices to control the operations of reactors and capacitor by adding them, them or removing them from the system based on the system's voltage requirements. Controlling the voltage helps in delivering the required power. Many fax controllers used nowadays are VSC-based, such as Static VR Compensator SVC and Static Synchronous Compensator Statcom. 11. Variable Impedance Devices where the impedance is controlled using thyristors and rectifiers. Example of a common impedance fax controller is the thyristor-controlled series compensator TCSC which uses silicon-controlled rectifiers SCR to manage the operation of a capacitor bank connected in series with a transmission line. By using this method, utilities can deliver the same power for further distances. 12. The Power Factor Controller Power factor can be controlled by using a thyristor-controlled phase-shifting transformer TCPST, which is considered a combined series shunt controller. This method is uncommon, and no data collected data shows how effective this method is. 13. 4. Controlling the voltage and the power of the system. An example on this method is superconducting magnetic energy storage sneeze, which is also an uncommon controlling method, and no data was found to support it during my research. As mentioned, fax devices can be put into two categories, shunt compensator and series compensator. Next, we are going to assess each category and list where each fax controller falls under. 14. Fax shunt compensator In shunt compensation, fax devices are connected in parallel with the transmission line. It acts as a controllable current source where it injects a reactive current into the system to stabilize the voltage. This can be represented by the term of injecting negative or positive reactive power VAR to the system based on the connected loads and the losses along the transmission line. The shunt compensator devices can be installed in the middle of the transmission line. This would split the transmission line into two separate parts. The voltage at the divided point can be controlled and regulated to match voltage at the, the end of the line which will lead to maximize the transmitted power. Also, it can be placed at the end of the line in parallel with the load and prevent voltage instability caused by load variations or line outages. There are two methods of shunt compensation. 1. Shunt Capacitive Compensation This main benefit of this method is to connect capacitors in parallel with the transmission line and control through thyristors by controlling the firing angle of the thyristor. This method is mainly used when there is an inductive load connected to the transmission line where the power factor lags due to a lagging load current. The shunt capacitors will then draw a current leading the voltage source and results in improving the overall power factor. 2. Shunt Inductive Compensation This method is used when there is a low or no load at the receiving end of the transmission line. Low or no load causes the system to draw a very small amount of current through the transmission line and this will result in voltage amplification due to the shunt capacitance in the transmission line. This phenomenon is called Ferranti effect, and it occurs when the receiving end voltage is higher than the sending end voltage and to compensate this change in voltage, shunt inductors are connected along the transmission line. Static VAR Compensator SVC by IEEE 1031 and 1534 SVC is defined as a shunt-connected static VR generator or absorber whose input is adjusted to exchange capacitive or inductive current so as to maintain or control specific parameters of the electrical power system typically bus voltage. SVC is used to regulate and control the line voltage by switching an inductor or a capacitor in shunt with the network. It is a combination of thyristor-controlled reactor TCR, thyristor-switched capacitor TSC, and a harmonic filter. It is widely used for many reasons, such as cost where it is considered a cheaper technology compared to other fax devices, not to mention that SVC is considered the, the first generation of fax devices. Fax Techniques Fax are broadly classified into four different categories based on the type of application. 1. Series Devices 2. Shunt Devices 3. Combined Series Series Devices 4. Combined Series Shunt Devices Let us see Series Devices. Series Devices are power electronic-based variable source of mains frequencies, subsynchronous frequencies and harmonic frequencies. In principle all series devices inject a voltage in series with the line. 
For example, variable impedance multiplied by the current flowing through it represents an injected variable series voltage in the line. As long as the voltage is in phase quadrature with the line current, the series controller only supplies or consumes variable reactive power. Any other phase relationship will involve real power being supplied or consumed. Let us see shunt devices. As in the case of series devices, shunt controllers may be of variable impedance, variable source, or combinations of these. In principle, shunt devices inject current into the system at the point of connection. Variable shunt impedance connected to the line voltage causes a variable current flow and hence represents injection of current into the line. As long as the injected current is in phase quadrature with the line voltage, the shunt controller only supplies or consumes variable reactive power. Any other phase relationship involves supply or consumption of real power. Combined series series devices. Combined series series devices are normally referred to as interline power flow controllers which are a combination of separate series devices controlled in a coordinated manner. Combined series ser series devices have the ability to balance both real and reactive power flows in the lines when the DC terminals of all the controller converters are connected together for real power transfer. They are called Unified Power Flow Controllers UPFC. Combined Series Shunt Devices Combined Series Shunt Devices are a combination of separate shunt and series devices which are controlled in a coordinated manner. In principle, combined shunt and series devices inject current into the system with the shunt part of the controller, and voltage in series in the line with the series part of the controller. Types of Fax Devices there are two distinctly different approaches to realization of fax devices, the first is based on conventional thyristor technology and the second is by using voltage source converters. Different types of fax devices that are available are 1. Thyristor Controlled Reactor TCR 2. Thyristor Switched Reactor TSR 3. Thyristor Controlled Capacitor TCC 4. Thyristor Switched Capacitor TSC Flexible AC Transmission Fax Operational Challenges While fax devices offer significant benefits for the power grid, their implementation presents certain operational challenges that need to be addressed. Here are some key areas. 1. Protection Systems Traditional distance protection relays, used to detect and isolate faults on transmission lines, can malfunction due to the rapid and dynamic changes in power flow caused by fax devices. New protection schemes and relay settings need to be developed to ensure accurate fault detection and isolation while considering the presence of fax devices in the grid. 2. System Planning and Analysis The complex interactions between fax devices and the power grid can make system planning and analysis more difficult. Advanced modeling and simulation tools are necessary to accurately predict the impact of fax devices on system performance under various operating conditions. 3. Interoperability and Communication Different types of fax devices need to effectively communicate and coordinate with each other and with the central control system. Standardized communication protocols and interoperability standards are crucial for seamless operation and efficient control. 4. Operator Training and Expertise Operating personnel responsible for managing the grid with fax devices need specialized training and expertise to understand their functionalities, limitations, and potential impact on system behavior. This includes understanding the interaction of fax devices with various protection relays and control systems. 5. Cost and Maintenance Fax devices can be expensive to install and maintain due to their complex technology. Utility companies need to carefully evaluate the cost-benefit analysis before implementing these devices, ensuring their long-term operational effectiveness and return on investment. Additional Challenges Harmonics Fax devices can introduce harmonics into the power system, which can affect power quality and equipment performance. Mitigation strategies need to be implemented to minimize this impact. Cybersecurity as fax devices are increasingly integrated into the grid, they become vulnerable to cyber attacks. Robust cybersecurity measures are essential to protect them from unauthorized access and manipulation. Overall, while fax technology plays a vital role in enhancing the performance of power grids, addressing these operational challenges is crucial to ensure it's safe, reliable, and efficient operation.